question three, let's take a look at this graph. So at first glance, it doesn't look like any of like the curvy shape uh, periodic functions that we've seen so far but in this case we do have a trend in what's going on and this graph does come back to its original spot right here and then makes another period so let's read the question the movement of a factory machine that cuts grooves in metal to create a required template pattern is shown on the following graph so you're making basically like a curve you're scooping it out going to its original position and etc right so with these questions let's see we have to answer a describe what the machine could be doing at each part of the graph would you consider this trend periodic uh, what is the axis, amplitude, range, and period? How fast is a mach machine moving on its way up? So I'm going to go ahead and, and actually solve for question B because this tells you kind of information of what's going on. So remember what the axis is basically the middle of your graph um, in terms of your Y axis and it's between your max and min and it's right in the middle. And reminder for the formula that it's max plus min divided by 2. So let's plug in our values. So I'm noticing that for this graph, that this is the max and the max value coordinate is 10 comma one. And remember, I'm gonna use the Y value for the max. Um, I could use either of these coordinates, but if I, let's say, take the second one, they're gonna have the same Y value anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. The minimum value is uh, seven comma negative seven, but I'm looking at just the Y values. So that's gonna help me figure out what my axis value is. So I'm gonna do one, uh, I'm going to do 1 plus minus 7 divided by 2. When I do that, I will get negative 6 divided by 2, and that's negative 3 millimeters. And that is the axis. And it'll be convenient to just draw our axis line, and this is y equals negative 3, and that is the axis. It represents the average height of the machine. Let's move on to our amplitude. Remember, amplitude simply meant what is the distance between your max and your axis. Uh, and that's one way to look at it. So amplitude is found by doing this. Uh, so the formula is max, I'm oh, sorry, axis minus min. Uh, you could do that or max minus um, axis. So I'm going to erase that because the version that I actually used for this question was max minus axis. So when we do that, we notice that we are doing 1 minus minus 3. I'm just going to do 1 minus minus 3 because that's what I have in my visual. And so I have 4 millimeters for my amplitude. So it's been kind of color coded, okay? So remember, what does their amplitude mean? Well, the amplitude is the displacement from the mean or the average. Meaning, what is the distance from the middle value and to the max? What's the distance between the middle value to the minimum? Well, amplitude is always positive, and so then you're going to get 4 millimeters every time for that. Moving on to the range. So the range is, uh, we are familiar with that because we've been doing that for all of our units. Uh, the range is where is my Y values possible? And so primarily you're looking at your min and max to uh, state that. And so you're going to uh, say that the range is from between negative 7 and 1 where you're going to include those values. So we have negative 7. So it's from negative 7 to 1 and including. Um, the period. So what is the period? Well, period is how long does it take for one cycle? So in this case, I highlighted this in yellow so you can tell how long a cycle is. And I'm going to actually highlight it up to this point to indicate that that is actually one cycle. And the next cycle would start from this coordinate to the very end. And notice it was specific to when I started. I didn't end my period right here, but I had to make it so that it goes all the way to here because that's when the new um, cycle starts. And so just taking a look at one cycle, 
the period for one cycle is from 13 to 0. So what, that's one period. And you can either do... So you can basically do 26 minus 13 to get your one period, or you can do 13 minus 0 to get your other period. Um, because this is a periodic function, you will get the exact same answer either way. It just you're looking at different cycles to get your answer. So I have to write down the units. And so the first version was coming from my second cycle. 13 minus 0 is coming from my first cycle. Either way, the period is equal to 13 seconds. It says describe what the machine could be doing at each part of the graph. Would you consider this trend periodic? So we are basically... We can basically say that because this graph is coming and returning to its initial position, like we said before, that it is periodic. So it is periodic, example, as it has the same period per cycle, and it always returns to its original position. And what are they doing per each cycle? So what I'm going to say is that first, during this first segment right here, this first linear line, uh, it is making the cut initially. And this is occurring between a uh, domain of 0 to 7. And then next, it's like scoping out the cut. We already made the cut. So once the cut has been made, you're returning to its original position. So it is making the cut initially from 0 to 7. And if you're further interpreting it, you could say you're scoping it. You are probably like wiggling around so you can get the get the get the metal part properly, scoping it out, and then coming back to its original position and repositioning. We answered um, the question B through here. And for C, how fast is a move, uh, machine moving on its way up? So this is weight making its position down and then uh, it's at the same position and this is the only part where it's going up and so to calculate that we are going to look at the data from 7 to 10 seconds and we can find out how fast it is moving up that is talking about the speed so if we're talking about distance over time that is your speed and so you're gonna find your rate of change and that's equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. When I take a look at these two coordinates right here, I am doing 1 minus minus 7, 10 minus 7. And when I do that, I will get 1 plus 7, which is 8, 10 plus 7, which is 17 which is equal to approximately 0 0.5 millimeter per second. Um, and I'll just put a little summary on the side. So you have rate of change, which is another way for slope. And in this case, we have a uh, difference in position divided by difference in time. And that delta, this is what the triangle means, the delta symbol, which uh, represents change in. And so for our sentence answer, you would say, therefore, the machine is going up at... Zero point five millimeter per second. Okay, so for question four, it says to decide if each graph or description or table of values is periodic or not. So one way to check whether a graph is periodic or not is to double check uh, if the period is consistent. Uh, so for this graph, I'm noticing that let's say you can start from here and it's oscillating and it returns at this original spot and approximately the uh, period is at about negative five ish here and so the period for this 
function can be found by doing 1.5 minus minus 5 period is equal to 6.5. And generally, I notice that with this graph, I, I see that it is continuing this trend. And so I can generally say that this is a yes, this is a periodic function. Later on for question five, it tells me to find all the period, axis, amplitude, and range for all these above questions anyways. And so I'm going to do that right now. So I have, I've already found the period. And so the way I usually go through it is... Well, the max value is usually the easiest one to indicate. So the max value is equal to 1. Meanwhile, the min value is equal to negative 3. While the axis value is equal to negative 1. So then the amplitude is equal to, well, the value between 1 to negative 1, there are two units between that. And so amplitude is equal to 2. So I've written down all the information, the max, min, the axis, the amplitude, and the period. Moving on to question B, uh, what kind of function is that? Well, right now it's like oscillating, as you can tell. It is kind of decreasing and becoming smaller and smaller every time. And so we notice that also that the amplitude is not consistent. And so we can say that, uh, no, it is not a periodic function. A main reason for that is that am the amplitude is not identical. Question C, so for same reasons here, it's a no for whether this is a periodic or not. Uh, it doesn't really repeat. The periods are not really the same. Uh, the amplitude is also, well, amplitude might be okay, but it looks like it's not really coming back to its original spot. Question D, so at first glance, you might be like, ah, it's maybe not a periodic function. It's not what we we're used to. Uh, kind of reminds me of like what a heart rate monitor might look like um, if the X and Y values were made more sense uh, to the way a heart rate goes. Uh, let's try to look at it. So in general, I'm noticing that let's say if I start at this point, it's going up and then it's going down, it's going up, it's going down, and then it's going up, it's going down. And I'm noticing that the patterns kind of repeat again. There's some kind of trend to this. And so let me look at a precise part. So if this is about negative 21 and over here is about 10.5, this is one period. So this is one period and then a new period would start from here and you notice that they're going like the exact same way although you don't see like the end of the second cycle. And so I'm going to say yes, it is a it is a periodic function and so for the later question I would have to find the max min and axis anyway, so I'll go ahead and try to find my max so max is at 9, and my min is at negative 3. And I usually use a dashed line to show that it continues to, um, to kind of see a bigger picture of what is going on. Uh, we have the axis that is running down the middle. So the axis is the value between 9 and negative 3. So quickly in my head, I'm doing 9 minus 3, which is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So axis is 3, and that is what I see on the graph. We're going to go on to the amplitude. So amplitude is, well, 9 minus 3, which is equal to 6. And it's also equal to uh, 3 minus minus 3. And amplitude, again, is 6. And because it's a periodic function... I should have the amplitudes to be equal. I'll just start, I'm just going to write the calculation for finding the period. It's always the right point x minus the left point x. A common mistake with the finding the period is that 
um, students um, might look at like the Y value, let's say, but when we're dealing with a period, that's like the time it takes and we should look at the X values instead. And so we have 10.5 minus minus 21. So P is equal to 31.5. And whoops, I forgot to find the range for question A and D. So I'm going to go back to question A for a sec. The range. So range is uh, where do my values of Y exist? And so I just take a look at my max and min and then state my range. So range is simply going to be Y elements of reals such that now you have values from negative 3 to Y to 1 and including 1. And when I scroll to question D, the range, again, I'm just looking at the max to min, and you're going to go from the min to max because you go from the smaller, more negative value to the larger value. And so this is my range. Okay, so let me go to question E. So E says, okay, dependent is always Y, independent is X. It says the horizontal distance traveled by the grandfather clock's pendulum in time so if i start my graph off so maybe i started off at some point and i am um maybe the pendulum is three meters above but then it's gonna probably like move down or up in some kind of way and then it's gonna return to its like original position and so, well, it depends on how you interpret it or where it starts from, but that's one way to look at it. And so, yes, it is a sinusoidal function or a, a sorry, it, has, it is a periodic function. A sinusoidal function like sine theta and cos theta is a type of periodic function. Let's go on to F. So F. Um, dependent is interest on the money invested at 5%. Independent is the principal deposited. So you have a graph, you know, you start off somewhere, maybe like $100, and you keep leaving your money in the bank, and it's going to probably like go like this, depending on what my time is set at as. But it doesn't really look like... Um, a periodic function because I'm not gonna have a graph that's like gonna go like this but it's gonna continuously go up as long as I don't remove any money and so I'm gonna say no it's not a periodic function for G so we have dependent is the height of a pedal on a moving bicycle independent is the minute so yeah you're gonna again start off somewhere and then you're gonna make your way down and then go up again so something like that and so, yes, it is a periodic function. For question five, uh, we're not there yet, yet, uh, H. So H, you're given a table of values. So some things I'm going to check uh, mentally in my head is, okay, all of my X values are going up at the same rate of four. Um, noticing, so I start off at seven, go to four, I go to one, oh, I go four, and then seven, four, and one. Okay, so I did that really rough sketch in my head and with the laser pointer, and I'm just going to circle all the sevens, and then maybe my one, which is that uh, the smallest number that I see for the Y value. And so we kind of saw that went seven, oops, went seven, four, one, and then four, seven, and then four, one. So it was like a periodic function. And I'm just going to draw that sketch and leave it there. I don't want to really draw the X and Y. I don't want to do a full sketch. But that tells me that basically the 7 was my max and my 1 was my minimum. And so based on the graph and everything that I see, I can say, yes, it is a periodic function. Okay, so for question I, the uh, first check that I'm going to do is that the X values, in fact, do go up at the same rate. And it does. Everything goes up by 2s. So with the Y values, it's a little hard to see what is going on and whether it's in, uh, is uh, periodic or not. So I went ahead and tried to sketch this. And this is what I got. And what do you think? So it can look like a periodic function. 
but it seems like we have not enough information to confirm. So for example, if I went and graphed this, if you just look at this part of it, it looks pretty, it looks like a periodic function, right? Uh, but then if you expand or unzoom, you see that it's not. It's not a periodic function at all, actually. It's a cubic function with a couple zeros at 0, 1, and 2. So we can't say that this is a periodic function, but we need more but we need more details. Okay? And so in our case, we're going to write. No, from what we see. So, for example, we want need more coordinates to confirm. So we basically did um, question five already because we planned it in advance, but we do need to still find it for H. So first things first, let's find the period. So the period is uh, next point X minus previous point X. And so we have we have the minimum that met the minimum and the max that met the max, right? And so one way is that you could pick out the 21 minus 5, and you can tell that I'm looking at the x values when I do that, right? So I am going to do, let's say, 21 minus 5, and I get 16 for the period. Another way to look at this is if I looked at the green part, so the max, the max. And so I would have gotten 13 minus minus 3, and I would have gotten 16. So either way, I'm getting 16. Therefore, I'm going to say that the period is equal to 16. So one way to find the axis formula is do max plus min divided by 2, because right now we don't have a graph to visualize it with. And so when we do that, we're going to get... 7 plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 4 for the axis. For the amplitude, we're going to do max minus axis. And so that is going to equal to, well, max. So the max value was 7, and the axis value was 4. And so the amplitude value is 3. So amplitude equals 3. Last part for the range. Well, range is equal to uh, the max value to the min value or the min value to, to the max value. And so we're going to say range is equal to y elements of real such that its values from 1 to 7. On the next page, it says sketch a periodic graph with the following characteristics, period of eight units, amplitude to three, and axis at negative two. So here's a, how I'm gonna go about it. So this has a value of one, and that is the max value. And then you have a min value of, well, we don't really know. So let's start off. Uh, right now, we know that the x-axis value is a negative 2. So I'm going to write that that is negative 2. What else do we know? We know that the amplitude is 3. So that means I need to move up my units 3 times. And my amplitude is equal to 3. Therefore, that makes my maximum a 1. Okay. And based on the amplitude being equal to 3, uh, my min value is equal to negative 5. At this point, um, you could draw your graph in 
technically your graph and my graph can look different, right? As long as we're following these characteristics. But the way I've drawn it is I'm going to start here and eventually I'm going to stop here. And the period is eight units long. So the way I'm going to draw it, I know that eventually I need to hit the minimum at some point, come back up to the axis, and this time I'm going to draw it so that it's like lines like that, and I have to repeat it so that it looks like a line there comes up, a horizontal line, and then comes back up. So I've drawn this for two cycles now. So that is my graph, like a potential graph you can have that follows the three characteristics. Question B, period are three quarter units and range between negative four and negative one. So I went in ahead and draw the X and Y axis based on the negative four and negative one. So my highest value is going to be a negative one and that's my max. Uh, what, while the minimum value is going to be a negative four. Well, then how do you find the axis? Well, I can find the axis. I know it's about there, but the axis is going to be equal to negative 1 plus negative 4 divided by 2, which is equal to negative 2.5 for my axis. So for my graph, um, I know that the period is going to be 3 quarters. It's going to be easier for me to say that in terms of decimals which is 0 0.75 units so I'm gonna draw like what a sinusoidal function looks like so I'm gonna start here draw the next coordinate meet in the middle come all the way to the bottom and make its way to its original position and what else they didn't tell me but with all the information available I'm able to identify the amplitude, which is 1.5, because 2.5 minus 1 is 1.5, and amplitude is always a positive number. And please note, when they told me the range, that was telling me the min and the max. Number 7. A boy bobbing up and down in the water of a depth of 16 feet. Um, as waves move past it, the buoy moves from its highest to its lowest point and back to its highest point. The water on average has five waves every 40 seconds. The distance between its highest and lowest points is three feet. Sketch for three cycles and state the domain. So basically, um, that means that you are dealing with a depth of water of X... Um, of 16 feet right so if you're all the way to the ground of the water and then you have water there and then the boy thing is like going up and down up and down and then this must be uh 16 feet and then that boy is gonna go up and down and you're gonna hit a max and min right and so that means that 16 is my axis and it is coming from the fact that the water is 16 feet deep grabbing some other information what does the three feet tell you um the distance between its highest and lowest point is three feet so so what does the three feet mean well if you have your boy and you have your water uh, it's saying that it's gonna hit its max and hit its min it's gonna go back and forth back and forth uh with uh range of three feet and so this is the y distance between max and min is three feet and therefore well what does that mean for the amplitude well for the amplitude well amplitude is max minus axis and from here to here, that's the amplitude. And so calculation-wise, you're going to do 3 divided by 2, and you're going to get 1.5 feet for the amplitude. 
the five waves every 40 seconds. Well, that's going to help you with what? It's going to help you determine the period. Well, why is that? Well, if you know that five waves are occurring every 40 seconds, well, what does that mean for one wave? Well, there's a simple calculation. You can divide by five, and you're going to get that in one cycle, it's going to take you eight seconds. And that's what a period is. Like, how long does it take take for one cycle? So with this information, you can start graphing. And so what I did was... Well, based on the fact that the period is eight seconds, I drew a quick um, x-axis saying, okay, well, that's my one, that's one period, that's this two period, and that's three periods because they wanted me to write and sketch for three cycles. So after that point, you might want to draw your y values respectively. So we notice that the axis 16 feet, so I'm going to write this is 16, and that represent, represents the axis. Uh, we know that the max is going to occur at 16 plus 1.5, and that's 17.5, and that's the max axis for 16. And the min is going to occur at 16 minus 1.5, which is at 14.5. So it did say in the uh, in the question that the boy moves from its highest point to its lowest point and back to its highest point. So that reminds me of what a cosine looks like. As, as a quick reminder, a cosine looks like this, and a sine theta sine theta looks like that. So cos theta starts on its maximum, sine theta starts at the origin. So with that in mind, I'm going to start by drawing a coordinate there. Uh, and they said that it's going to hit its min and hit its max. So that's how I'm going to draw it. So if I was to have more coordinates, remember how to draw that cosine? You're going to draw that dot in the middle of that and the middle of that to be a little more precise with your drawing. So this is going to represent your first cycle. And you're going to continue along. Okay, so for 8 to 16, well, that's going to be my max. 16 is going to be my max. 12 is going to be my minimum. Between 8 and 12, which is 10, I'm going to put a coordinate in the, at the axis. At 14, I'm going to put a coordinate at the axis. Draw an approximate curve. So my drawing is not perfect. Um, but at the 24, I'm going to draw another max. 20, a min. At 16, um, between 16 and 20, which is 18, put a dot in the middle. Between 20 to 24, that's a 22, put at the middle. And there's my three cycles. <coughs> so overall, this is my first cycle. I'm going to draw my amplitude in. So this is my amplitude, which is 1.5. Let's quickly find the domain of the above graph. So the domain is where does the um, x values exist, or in this case, t values exist. And I noticed that it exists for from 0 to 24. So I'm just going to write it, that it exists from 0 to 24. How did I get that? Well, in one cycle, it must be 0 to 8. But because I have three cycles, I have basically 8 times 3. 24 as my total number of seconds for the period for three cycles and so I have a domain of from 0 to 24 all including. So for my um, increasing graphs, these are my increasing graphs. Meanwhile, these are my decreasing parts. Why do I need that? Well, for the next question it says, where are the increasing and decreasing intervals? Well, um, in terms of like how you know whether it's increasing or decreasing, if it's going up, that's increasing. If it's going up like that, that's increasing. So just think of it as like if you're going up a mountain, that's usually increasing. Whereas if you're like going down a mountain, that's decreasing.
so where is it increasing so i have to look at all the green parts for the increasing and i might need these like red lines to be a little more precise but they are hitting right on the dot so when i do that i notice that from four to eight i have an interval Next, I have 12 to 16. Next, I have 20 to 24. For decreasing, I'm now looking at the pinkish part. So I have 0 to 4, 8 to 12, 16 to 20. And there we go.